plants early, then do crop rotation, use resistant variety, use insecticide, then uproot and burn infected plants. The next disease is cassava mosaic disease. It's also caused by virus. Also transmitted by piercing and sucking of an insect, but this time around, the insect is white fly, Bamisia nigrensis. It also transmitted by infected plant cuttings. When a healthy plant gets in contact with an infected plant cutting, then it can be infected. The symptoms you see on a cassava that has a mosaic disease, there will be molting of leaves or the calling of the leaves. Then there will be distortion, distortion of leaves and stem. The leaves will be giving way. Then there will be vein clearing. The vein at the vein of the leaves, there will be, it will be decolored. It will not be green anymore. It will be changing color, like turning white. Then the plants will experience stunted growth. Then there will be development of yellowish pale areas, alternating with green patches. So you see patches on the leaves of the plants, and the color of that patches will be yellow. How do you prevent or control the cassava mosaic disease? You use resistant varieties, plant resistant varieties, then you use insecticide on the plants that is affected already. You can uproot and burn infected plants. Then you use disease free stem cuttings, you know. In cultivating cassava, you use stem cuttings. So make sure you use disease free stem cuttings. Then make sure you practice farm sanitation that everywhere is neat in your farm. The next disease is the cocoa black pot disease. This is caused by a fungus called, called Phytophthora palmivora. It is transmitted through rain splash and insects. What you see on a diseased cocoa plant with this cocoa black pod disease is that there will be brown spots on the pod. The pods will also be rotting. The entire pod will turn black. Then you observe low yield. How do you prevent black pod disease of cocoa? You remove and destroy infected pods. You know, when rain comes on it, it will spread it. So to prevent that, just remove every infected pod and destroy them. Make sure you do regular weeding, then spray with fungicide. Avoid overcrowding of cocoa plants. You know, when there is overcrowding, disease on one will spread to the others quickly. The next disease is the coffee leaf rust. Coffee leaf rust is caused by a fungus, transmitted by wind and by rain splash. The symptoms you observe on the diseased coffee plants, you will see yellow or brown spots on the leaves. There will be ball rot. Then there will be exudates from affected leaves. That is, it will emit some liquid substances. Then there will be retarded growth in such a plant and eventually lead to the death. Prevention and control of coffee leaf rust. One, you plant seeds from a healthy plant. You spray with copper fungicides, then plant resistant variety. The next disease is root knot of tomato or okra. This is caused by a nematode, and the mode of, mode of transmission is the nematode in the soil. The symptoms you observe on a diseased tomato or okra with root knot is that the roots will be not just as the name. Then there will be retarded, retarded goods, heavy death of plants will set in the reduction in yield. How do you prevent root knot disease of tomato and okra? You sterilize your soil, do crop rotation, then use resistant varieties of seeds, then uproot and burn infected plants. The next disease of crop is onion twister disease. This is caused by a fungus. And it is transmitted through infected soil, water splash, and onion bulb, infected onion bulb. The symptoms you will observe is that there will be twisting of the leaves, then you will find gray patches on the leaves, there will be reduction in the yield of the onion, then death of the plant. How do you control or prevent onion twister disease? 
you use curb rotation method, you use resistant variety, spray with fungicide, and then do any planting. General effects of diseases on crop production. The effects that diseases have on the production of crop. First, they reduce the yield and productivity of crops. Then they also reduce the quality. They reduce the quantity and the quality. They cause malformation of parts of plants or the whole plants. They can kill or cause the death of the whole plants. They cause reduction in the income of the farmer. When the farmer is expecting to sell 10 sacks of a particular, let's say 10 sacks of cocoa, and there is a black pod disease of cocoa that has infected his farm, and he can only get paid off for you know, that's a serious loss and reduction in the income of the farm. Then if we increase the cost of production, when you are trying to prevent, okay, you are using um, insecticide, you are using fungicide, you are doing this and that. So there will be increased expenditure when there is disease on your plant because you want to control it and save the rest. It's re um, diseases renders vegetables and fruits unattractive and unmarketable. You don't want to buy diseased vegetables in the market. You just give it. So it makes it's unattractive and unmarketable. It also causes retarded growth in plants and leads to delayed maturity. So those are the effects of crop plant diseases. Then how do we control them? How do we control diseases? There are three methods of controlling diseases. The first is the cultural control method, the biological and the chemical method. The cultural control method involves the use of some um, strategies and habits, cultivation of habits like crop rotation, you use resistant variety, you do tillage, regular weeding, you do following, then timeliness in planting, you prune the plants, you uproot infected crops, you maintain fine farm hygiene, then you harvest on time. These are cultural control methods. Just put cautions in place. That is cultural control. The biological control is the use of the natural enemies of that disease to reduce or totally eliminate the disease. So you use the enemy. What we eliminate the disease naturally, you introduce it to your farm. So that is biological control. While chemical control is the use of chemicals such as fungicide, insecticide, nematicide on the plants, you just use or spray it on the plant to prevent or control plant diseases. Now we move on to talk about the crop pest. The crop pest is any organism that is capable of da causing damage to our crop plants. And important pest, pest of crop plants include the following insects, we have birds, we have rodents, monkeys, man, nematode. Those are pests. Our, those could be pests that attack our farm. Then how do we classify insect pests? They are classified into three. We have the biting and chewing insects. We have the piercing and sucking insects. Then the boring or brewing insects. The biting and chewing insect possesses strong mandibles and mazini, which enable them to bite and chew plant parts. Example of biting and chewing insects, we have termites, we have grasshoppers, we have leaf worms, we have honey worms, locusts, and beetles. While the piercing and sucking insects possess strong mouth parts called proboscis, so they are able to pierce through the plant and suck liquid materials from plant tissues. Examples of piercing and sucking insects. We have aphids, we have mealybugs, we have calcites and cotton stainers. Then the third class of insect pests is the boring or the growing insects. These insects and even their larvae, they are capable of burrowing or digging deep into the plant parts and destroying their tissues or even the fruit or seeds. An example we have bean beetle, we have stem growers, we have maize weevils and rice They just cause hole, they pierce through into plant parts. Now, just as we look at important um, diseases of major crops, we are looking at important pests of major crops. The crops they attack, the nature of their damage prevention and their control. The first one is stem brewer. 
stem growers attack cereals such as maize, rice, and guinea corn, and they bore, their larva bore holes into the stem, they eat up the tissue, and they also weaken the plant. How do you prevent stem growers or put and burn infected plants? Spray with insecticide, e.g. gamma 20 do any planting, then do crop rotation. The next insect pest is animal, and they attack cereals, e.g. maize. The nature of damage includes their larvae invade and eat up leaves and stem. They reduce photosynthesis, they cause retarded growth, and reduce the yield. How do we prevent and control hummingworm and pick it? Then you can spray with insecticide, such as DDT. Then pod borrower, borrower. Pod brewer attack legumes, e.g. cowpea, soybeans. The nature of damage is that they allow the larvae bore holes into the pod of soybean or cowpea. They eat up the seed and they also reduce the yield. How do we control pod brewers? You spray with insecticide, do any planting and crop rotation. The next category of insect pests is aphids. Aphids attack legumes cowpea and soybean as well. They cause some dead growth. They leave girls on the leaves. They are vectors of some diseases such as the rosette mosaic disease of cowpea. How do you control if you spray with insecticide then uproot and burn infected plants? The next insect pest is yam beetles. They attack tubers such as yam. And how do they damage the Plants, they are loving.